Hello there, welcome back. This segment of the video, I'd like to talk about your four pillars of investing for your, for your financial retirement. Your personal savings, your Roth IRA, your 401k, and your Social Security. First up, I want to talk about Social Security because there's a lot of myths about it. The myth that's going to run out. Could it run out? Oh, absolutely. It, it could at some point run out. It, it, that is a disdained possibility. When you have more retirees than people working, then yes, it, it will it will run out. But the odds of that happening, we have more people. First off, we have more people being born now. Two, we have more people working now. Three, people are retiring at a later age for a lot of various reasons. Not just economic reasons, but you're healthier. You're living a little bit longer. You know, you don't hit that elderly age problems where you can't move as efficiently. You don't eat as much. And... So, as you get older, some people who are 69 or 70 look and feel like they're still in their 50s. And so, they, they work maybe another 10 years. I mean, they're, uh, like, I know my grandpa he worked till he was 80 and died when he was 82. So, he didn't really collect Social Security. So, there, there are people, there are a lot of people like that who just worked and saved and had more than enough but they just enjoyed working they just worked all the way up until they just physically couldn't do it anymore and then there's people like my grandma who didn't really he, she worked part-time jobs up until she was about 60 and then when she was when my grandfather passed away she started collecting social security and she collected till she died in around 90 92 ish Anyway, the myth about Social Security is is that I know there's re Republicans are saying, and they have been saying for years that it's going to run out and that you know you shouldn't be lazy and you shouldn't. First off, you're not lazy for collecting Social Security when you have re reached the retirement age. Your Social Security, you've been paying into it with every tax along the way. Your employer tax. You've been paying into that 40 years. Every time you've been collected a paycheck, you've paid that tax. Every time you sold your house, you've paid taxes into it. Every time you've made income off of investments, you've paid tax, your Social Security tax. When you cash out your 401k and your Roth IRA, you have paid the Social Security tax. So why would you think you're not entitled to it after you've been paying into it your whole life? If you, you've probably paid twice as much as what you're going to collect in retirement too. But you shouldn't just rely on Social Security. That's part going to be part of another video about segments of the population not planning on invasion, not planning, planning on investing and realizing the importance of it. But this is about the four pillars. So you have your Social Security. You got to invest because you're going to get 32000 a year off of it. It's not a lot. Trust me, it's not a lot. That's why you can't rely on it. But it's a good little thing because by the by time you're past 65, your mortgage should be paid off or very minimal. You should own your cars. You know, house doesn't need to be fixed up or anything. You know, you, you should be set. That's why your Social Security is going to pay your basic needs such as food your utility bills and what have you. Now your your next pillar is your personal savings. This is one a lot of Americans fall behind on. And millennials don't personally save. Especially if you if you're a young family, you know you got a couple kids, partner I gotta say partner now, but hey, I don't care. Everybody pays their taxes equally. So, but you got a young family, they save $500 a month. They should be putting $500 into just a personal savings account for emergencies and the inevitability when they retire. So you should just be saving, saving, saving. As you're single, you should be saving even more. I know it's tempting, you guys want to go out to a bar, you want to go hang out, you want to do this, but how many nights are you really going to be doing that? 
Like, let's be realistic. And you don't need to spend a fortune doing it. You know, people want to spend... It's like, you know, you want to buy, get a great brand new car. You want to get... It's like, oh, I want to get that Mercedes or BMW. I want to go get a boat because, you know, I'm single and I got money to burn. No, take that money, put it in yourself. Save it, save it, save it, save it, save it, save it, save it. Because one thing I can tell you is the future is going to be a hell of a lot worse than what it is now. So you got to save. Even Social Security will still be around, but you still got to save for those inevitable buildings. And plus, having that extra cushion with that gap, when once you retire, then you apply for Social Security, and then you're waiting on your 401k and Roth IRAs to cash out. You got some money to cushion yourself. That's why your savings is important. Even if it's, you know, if you could save $50 a check or $100 a check, it adds up. It adds up very quickly, especially when you're not touching it and you're ignoring it. My best suggestion with a savings account, put it in a bank that you have to physically walk into. Don't have any debit card attached to that account. If you want to withdraw from it, you have to go to the bank. Go to the teller and withdraw it or get a cashier's check, whatever you got to do. But you have to have it, you have to go into the bank to get it. That limits you because obviously that bank is only open, you know, during normal bank hours. I'd pick a, I'd pick a local bank because you're probably not going to amass more than $250,000 over your lifetime. But if you do and it's getting over $250,000, I would stop invest, putting money into that one. Uh, take or at least take half, break it in half, and put the other half in another bank. That way, because nowadays you can't trust whether a bank's going to go under or not. So my best, my best hope for that is when you switch it up is that if the bank does, for any reason, go out of business, your FDIC insurance will pay you up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars per for for all your accounts with that bank. That's why you put it in two different banks. So if you have 500000 break it up, put it in two different banks. That way, you if they do go under, you're covered. Your 401k. Many people opt into it, but they really don't understand it. So they don't really focus on getting into it as quickly as possible. This is why it's always good to get into your 401k. It is the easiest... How should I put this? It's it's a guaranteed 100% return. And this is why I say it's a guaranteed 100% return. Because when you put in $50, your employer gives you $50. Therefore, 100% gain, right? Then on top of that, you get 1% to 2% gains on your total value. So over 40 years of investing into your 401k, you have constantly put in money and your employer doubled it. And now you got to, if you put in $250,000 over the course of time, then your employer put in $250,000. My recommendation with your 401k, don't exceed your company percentage match. So if your company matches 3% of your paycheck, put in 3% of your paycheck. No more, no less. And a lot of people don't do it because they're like, well, my after, my after taxes will go down. Even if they did. Who cares? It's for your future. But two, your 401k comes out before your tax. So you, when you put that in, when it gets taken out, you're really not seeing that much of a difference. Maybe a dollar or two, five dollar difference. Some people actually get more money after tax because it cuts away the taxable income. And you can cash your 401k out, I believe, after the retirement age without, a pen, without the 10% penalty. Plus, if you ever have an emergency, I don't recommend it, but if you do have an emergency, you can borrow against your 401k and pay it back. So let's just say you have your, your child needs braces. You don't have $5,000, but you got $150,000 in your 401k, borrow against it. Borrow the $5,000. Just make sure that you pay it back in a year through your paychecks. That's my only suggestion. And no, no, that's a bad idea because you're basically taking out from yourself, but whatever. It's an extreme situation. Like when you really, 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 really need the money, but don't do it. 
and that's why your 401k is probably your second strongest pillar next to your social security because social security is going to be there and your 401k is going to be there so they're kind of there your personal savings is kind of going to fill in that gap now let's talk about your roth ira your roth ira is still greatly important you can put up to fifty five hundred dollars a year into it what i would do is once you save up fifty five hundred dollars dump it in at the january 1st that way you you get the full years of interest off that fifty five hundred dollars plus you can cash it out after your 55 years of age i do believe not entirely sure if that has changed over the last 10 years but once you, you can cash it out after 55 without any penalties and then you just pay the taxes on it because it is because it is tax exempt so but the importance of the Roth IRA is it gives you that extra leg. You know, a table with three legs is okay, but a table with four sturdy legs is really good. That's what your Roth IRA does. It puts your retirement, which is your table, and you got your four pillars. And that being another support pillar only helps you sustain it. Now, your Roth IRA gives you a little bit better interest in your standard savings account. But it also cannot be withdrawn out without a penalty. And you have a limit to how much you can put in there. If you want to find out more about your Roth IRA, contact your your um, local certified financial planner or go to your local bank that can help you and should give you information on your Roth IRA. It is very important to do a Roth IRA and to move that money back, move that money in there because it gives you an extra, it gives you more funds to live off of in in your years where you're just not going to be able to to really be working. So, and for a lucky few of us, you got a fifth pillar, which is your pension. And those, you know, government employees and, you know, lucky people who work for very good companies, military personnel, your pension is also a great thing. But also, don't rely on your pension. Save and invest the money that you're making because you're going to make tons of money over your lifetime. Save it, don't spend it. Don't spend it frivolously. What I mean don't spend it frivolously, like when you get a car. When you get a car, typically people just, oh, well, I make this much a month. I can budget $250 out, so that's where my payment's going to be. How about this? Instead of doing it that way, why don't you find the car you really like? Like, I don't know. I like, I personally like a Mercedes S 63 AMG Coupe. That's my personal taste. But back in the day, I was like, I wanted a Camry. So when, when I was 21, I wanted a Camry. So what did I do as I was 21? I looked up the Camry. It was going to cost me $370-something a month. So what did, I, what did I do? I paid myself the $378. I think it was roughly $78. Paid myself that every month for seven years. So what happened at the end of seven years? Well, my little Corolla finally burned out. So I was able to buy my Camry with cash. Now, I'm not paying any interest premiums. I'm not paying any leases. I got one less thing to worry about. I don't have a bank calling me saying, ring, ring, where's my money? You know, I don't have to worry about, oh, God, the car payments do, you know. I've been paying myself. And now, now I'm in a great financial position. I'm, I'm not at all extremely wealthy. But, you know, I am... I don't have to worry about funds and everything, so my next car, I'm going to buy a brand new Mercedes. And guess what I'm going to buy? How I'm going to get there? I pay myself what the standard 9% interest payment would be to myself, which is about $11,000 for 72 months. Well, not eleven thousand, $1,100 for 72 months on that car. So I'm paying myself that every month. Actually, I've been doing it for the last four years, so I got a pretty sub-sizable there. I'm, another couple years, I'm probably going to be able to buy that car. But that's the thing. Like, I'm buying the car with cash. I'm not financing it. I don't have anything else to worry about. All I got to do is take care of the car. And that's what? $300? Well, if it's a Mercedes, it's going to be about six, $700 every three or four months. So and you're saving, like, you're saving a ton. With that said, goodbye. See you later.